Hi everyone. Today in this video let us discuss a balance slope detector. A balance slope detector circuit is also called by name round travis detector. So this circuit minimizes the effect of slope error what we have seen in the case of a simple slope detector. Thus it provides a better linearity when compared to that of a simple slope detector. So the figure shows a balance slope detector. The circuit combines two simple slope detectors. The input transformer has got a center tap to secondary. So here the input voltages to the two slope detectors are 180 degree out of phase. So here we have got three tuned circuit and out of them the primary side is tuned to a frequency FC and here FC denotes the carrier frequency of FM modulation. It is also called as a sender frequency. Now the upper tuning part is tuned to a frequency of FC plus delta F where FC denotes the sender frequency and delta F denotes the frequency deviation and the lower circuit is tuned to FC minus delta F and the circuit uses two identical diodes D1 and D2. Here two filters are used the first one with components R1 C1 and second with R2 C2. Now after filtering we get at the output of filters two voltages V01 and V02. Now the FM signal is applied to the input of the primary, primary of the transformer. This has got a frequency FC. The incoming signal has got a frequency FC. And here two frequencies will be attained at the output of the secondary of this transformer. Now one frequency will be FC plus delta F and the other will be FC minus delta F. And from this we get two outputs one is V01 and the other is V02. So the effective voltage at the output of the circuit will be V out V0 which is equal to V0 that is equal to V01 minus V02. Now the, to explain the working of this balance slope detector we will be seeing certain conditions. The first condition is when the input frequency F in is equal to the carrier frequency FC. When the input signal sig signal frequency is equal to the carrier frequency FC, FC is equal to F in. At this condition, the voltage at T1, that is the induced voltage at the winding T1 of secondary is exactly equal to that induced in the winding of T2. Thus, the output voltage to both diodes D1 and D2 will be equal. So both diodes will be conducting the same voltage. Now at the output of the filter circuit we get two voltages V01 and V02 which will also be identical but they have opposite polarities that is V01 will be equal to V02 but they will have opposite polarities. That is the net output voltage is equal to V out is equal to V01 minus V02 that will be equal to 0. Okay, That is when Fc is equal to F in the input to diode D1 and D2 will be uh, the same. Both diodes will be conducting equally and will get equal output at, the out, at, the, at its output. So at the output the voltage V01 and V02 will be equal and the net output voltage will become V01 minus V02 which is equal to 0. Now we will go to the next condition. When the input frequency is greater than the carrier frequency and 
the sum of frequencies that is fc and delta f will be greater than the input frequency or when fc plus delta f is greater than the input frequency and the carrier frequency fc at this condition the voltage at t1 will be higher than that of that induced in the in the transformer winding t2 now since the voltage at t1 is higher than that of t2 the diode the input to the diode d1 will be higher than the input to the diode d2 that means d1 will conduct more and hence the voltage at the output of d1 that is a positive voltage which is higher than the negative voltage which is obtained at d2 so the net output voltage is v01 minus v02 which will be a positive value that is when fc plus delta f is greater than the input frequency and fc the input d to d1 will be greater than the input to the diode d2 diode d1 will be conducting more which results in v01 as a greater voltage when compared to that of v02 so the net output voltage will be positive now we go to the third condition when the carrier frequency fc is greater than the input frequency and fc minus delta f then the induced voltage in the winding t t1 is less than that induced in t2 therefore the input to diode d1 is less than the input to the diode d2 here d2 will be conducting more when compared to that of d1 and hence the output voltage at the output of the filter r1 c1 that is v01 is less when compared to that of v02 so the net output voltage will be v01 minus v02 that will be a negative or negative value now the next condition is when the frequency is out of range that is when the input frequency lies outside the range of fc plus delta f and fc minus delta f at this condition the output voltage will fall due to the reduction in the tuned circuit response now we'll go to the response curve so the response curve will be approximately in this pattern and this curve is also called as s shaped characteristics now here we have a linear area at the center and the curve is bent at the two edge two sides here we have the frequency fc minus delta f and here we have a frequency fc plus delta f and the region between these two frequencies fc minus delta f and fc plus delta s delta f is linear and this represents our useful range now so we call this curve as an s shaped characteristic due to the shape of the curve so let us revise our conditions with the s shaped curve or cara when f in is equal to input frequency is equal to the carrier frequency the input to diode d1 and d2 will be equal that is v01 is equal to v02 then the output voltage is v0 which is equal to v01 minus v02 which is equal to 0 next condition is when the carrier frequency is greater than the input voltage and fc minus delta f here diode d2 will be conducting more so v02 is greater than v01 the output voltage will be negative next condition when fc plus delta f is greater than the input frequency and the carrier frequency at this condition d1 is higher than d2 which results in v01 to be greater than v02 so the net output voltage at this condition is positive 
Now we go to the advantage of this circuit. So the circuit is more efficient when compared to that of the simple slope detector. The circuit provides a better linearity by reducing the slope errors we have seen in the case of simple slope detector. And also it can provide satisfactory operation if you take care on the design. That is a circuit can be designed to keep the distortions within a terrible limit. Now we go to the disadvantages. The linear characteristic is limited to a small frequency deviation. We get a linear characteristic over a very short frequency range that we define between the frequency Fc minus delta F and Fc plus delta F. The, it is difficult to get the circuit tuned as because we are using three tuned circuit and the detuned circuit output is not purely band limited. So for the detuned circuit the output is not purely band limited and hence the low pass filter of the envelope detector introduces distortion in its output. That is all about this topic. Thank you for watching this video.